Hey people, welcome to Podgorica in Montenegro. So it's our first time here and uh, we just arrived and uh, we've been having a little look around because we've been waiting for our apartment to become available, which uh, hopefully it will be in the next hour or so. But whilst we're doing that, we thought we'd have a little look around and uh, yeah, quite a cool vibe. So one thing we've already realized straight off the bat is that <laughs> the usual thing that we do where we pay by card pretty much for everywhere for everything ain't gonna work here very well because nowhere really accepts card it's not widely as widely accepted here as say other places I believe we're going into a dead end let's go this way um, so we've been coming we've come across that and then the next thing we came across was that the transportation here is different to what we're, I guess we're used to. Uh, obviously, usually we'll go from an airport and we'll get a, uh, you know, a tram, a, a or, tram a or a train or something. There's none of that here. Um, it's literally taxi. a taxi. You can get a train. There is a train station near the airport. It's about, about a 20 minute walk away. But from what I've read and what I've heard, as you're walking there, you're going to be heckled by loads of taxi drivers asking you if you want a taxi. Um, and some of them are quite persistent. I've seen videos around where uh, people, you know, taxi drivers really do try and, uh, they'll try any tactic. Like uh, I told this person that the train station was closed down due to COVID, but they had used other train stations. Ah, look at this. So uh, we wanted to avoid that. So in the end, we just got a, uh, we got a taxi it cost us 15 euros and uh well not too bad i mean the journey was about 20 minutes so i think 15 euros is around about 12 british pounds so a bit more than what we would have paid at home but needs must we wanted to get into the center and uh currently it's what like 30 degrees yeah about, that. about 30 well. degrees roughly and we're just making our way to the old town. I say we're making our way to the old town. I don't actually think we are. I'm going to have to give that to you, Tam, to uh, work out. Hopefully we're still on track. So, uh, yeah, it's boiling hot. But we're going to get over there, see what it's like, see what all the fuss is about. So the interesting thing, and perhaps the lucky thing for us, thing about Montenegro, is that it shares a lot of languages with many places around it so for instance we have Croatia we have Serbia Bosnia all of those languages are rooted in more or less the same grammatical structures and sentences with slight variations and tweaks to the wording but you could speak Croatian here Bosnian and be understood because it is essentially the same language and it always makes me laugh when I hear people say I can speak Serbian Montenegrin Croatian Bosnian it's like well, yes, you can. Yeah, technically you can. But anyone who could speak Croatian can also speak those languages as well. So always have that in mind if someone says that. <laughs> Claims to be a linguist. Now, I don't ever claim to be a linguist on my channel. I'm not. That's not what I am. I just have a passion for culture. I have a passion for learning about other people's ways of life. And I think a, a good way to do that... Let's go down this way. A good way to do that is to be able to speak a little bit of the language. But I'm in no way capable at languages, in my opinion. I, uh, I just about muster up English. <laughs> and look at this. Wow. Very, very nice. So, a few useful phrases if you're out and about in Montenegro. Let's start off with, it's a beautiful morning today. So that's double neutral. Now, if you've watched my series from... Slovakia, you realise that's quite similar to good morning there, which is Dobrovano, or Dobra. The word Dobra, good, appears in quite a few places in this part of the world. And uh, you kind of start to be able to link words together when you learn languages. It's almost like you learn one language and now you've inadvertently learnt several because they're shared words. Uh, another one is Dobodan, which is good afternoon, 
then you've got a Dobrovecce, a Dobrovecce, sorry, which is good evening, and Dobronoc. And again, I'm not completely sure if it's completely correct the Montenegrin way, so I do apologise to my Montenegrin brothers and sisters. I can only do so much. Um, if you want to ask for card, which is what I've been doing a lot today, it's Mogali Platiti Katitsum. If you want to order something, for instance, if you wanted to order a cup of tea, you'd say Mogali Dobiti Yedin Chaya Sam Liekon. Can I have a cup of tea with milk? If you want to be very precise, you can say Sony Chaya Black Tea Sam Liekon with milk. I prefer it with milk myself. You can have it with lemon, uh, Zitron, I think it is. Uh, so yeah, and then sorry is Jaumia. Uh Thank you is Fala. Uh, delicious is Okusno. Many, many useful phrases you can use. And it's worth it because the smiles on people's faces make it well worthwhile. But just uh, making our way to the old town. But as we did, we spotted this rather unique looking area. And uh, it's important, I think, to see how people live outside of the touristy areas. So of course, we're a stone's throw away from the touristy areas, but wanted to explore a bit further away from that. And so far the people have been ever so friendly, kind and welcoming. And so far it's been a very enjoyable experience. So let's keep going. So we find ourselves not too far from the old town and we can already see that the buildings are changing around us. Uh, they're becoming a lot more rustic, a lot more ancient and a lot more rural in their design and the way they look. And in many ways, Montenegro is a very unvisited country. You don't get many people visiting Podgorica. But strangely enough, actually, this was one of the most cheapest places that we've visited in a while. I'll put the, uh, the price down below. Um, but yeah, essentially it's, uh, it's, it's almost like a hidden gem, you know, it's not. In, in terms of, in terms of the, uh, the city itself, from what I've seen so far, I would say it's one of the less touristic capital cities I've ever seen, actually, which for me, that's perfect. Um, the guy running our apartment, Petar, I think his name is. I can't pronounce it properly. Peter, Petar. Um, he's been very helpful, giving us some information about local eateries and things to do. And now the strange thing is, is that Podgorica has a reputation for being quite a boring capital city. But I don't believe this is boring. I believe this is unique. Every single capital city with its sprawling buildings and its lack of character, you know? It's nice to get back to the smaller, more communal feeling. And to have that in a capital city, indeed, is actually a rare thing. But you can see people sitting around enjoying chaya and kavu, coffee, I believe, together, and uh, just talking. And again, in a capital city, you don't have that community spirit. So present day Podgorica wasn't always known as Podgorica. It was actually also known as Biezi Minimum. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. That's a tough one. And over the years, it's had many a different ruler. And uh, you can see that in the influence. So for instance, the Austro-Hungarian Empire, the Ottoman Empire, various empires ruled this land. And it all came to a climax in World War II, where the city was essentially levelled and then it had to be rebuilt again. So you see a lot of the old traditional charm, but then you also see some of the newer buildings and that's a result of the damage that was caused by World War II. Montenegro as well has one of the coolest flags. Very cool flag. So the word Montenegro in the local language is Shunogovsky. I believe that's how you pronounce it. And essentially what happened was when the Yugoslav Empire broke up, Podgorica became the capital of Montenegro, or an independent Montenegro in 2006, and it has been ever since. So a very interesting history. And as you can see, there's a lot of different influence in the buildings. You've got traditional, you've got ancient, you've got an Ottoman style, and you've got 
a clear European distinct style as well. And that's a blend of all the history that this place has experienced. Now we find ourselves in the old town, which is quite a sight to behold. Now most old towns are quite touristic, but actually if you have a look here, there aren't many tourists. Now for me, that's a defining characteristic of this place already, is that I'm here in the center of town in what is the old town, which in most cities, in most major capital cities, is the tourist hub. And yet it doesn't have that. It has that quiet, rural, small town vibe. But it's got a lot of heart and character. And so far I'm very impressed, Montenegro. Very impressed with your city indeed. And I know that Montenegro are keen to try and get more tourism and more people interested. And it shocks me that there isn't really. I mean, how often do you see places like this? These old rustic towns and this same feeling and as we see here, there is a glorious building, which well, you'll see shortly, is very much reminiscent of an Ottoman style. Now, we saw this quite a lot in Bosnia, Ottoman style buildings, and the Ottoman Empire, as it were, laid a lot of the foundations of styles around these parts of the world. And you can still see them today. And they are, in my opinion, some of the most beautiful building designs. Very, very stunning. But a blend of old and new is essentially how I would describe Podgorica so far. Uh, with friendly people, the prices are good, but do be aware that card is uh, not as commonly accepted here. But yeah, I think uh, I think anybody should come here and check it out and see what they think. You know, there's charm, there's character, but there's a lot of history, and for me, history is important because for instance you see this building here now to some this building here may be damaged and ransacked but to me this is a signal of the pain that this city must have been through and it's still exposed there for, for all to see and it's much like Bosnia actually when we went to Bosnia we saw a lot of the uh, a lot of the scars of the past and it brings it to light, it brings it home. You know, the, the suffering that people go through, but then the triumph and the rebuilding and, and the perseverance, it's, it's quite awe-inspiring really. But I've just lost Tammy, so I better go and find her. One thing that actually really did catch our eye as we came in to Podgorica was the views from the aeroplane. I opened the window, we had a little look out and mountains upon mountains, it was, it's like they built a city in the mountains, but it's just so vast. It's hard to really put into perspective. I mean, uh, I wish I caught it on camera. I might try and capture it on camera on the way back out so you can see for yourself. I do have a picture, but I don't think it really does it justice. But uh, it was possibly one of the most beautiful places I've ever flown over. If you're also curious, uh, Buduknost, Buduknost, I will, find out how to pronounce that later uh, is a local team um, from Podgorica um, and a lot of uh, a lot of the wow yeah I don't know if you can make that out let me let me see if I can get that on camera off into the distance there there's some mountains uh, again damaged buildings and uh, just such a disparity again and for me I love that I love disparity I love beauty and character culture history rolled into one now some may say that the damaged buildings are unsightly and not nice to look at but for me I disagree I think they're a part of uh, a part of the character of a city you know again where I'm from we have the same thing and uh, it makes up a lot of the character of the city you know if everything was I've been to places that are completely squeaky clean a good example is um, Abu Dhabi in the United Arab Emirates it was all very squeaky clean and I enjoyed my time there, but I did feel like it lacked a bit of character. Um, it didn't have that, that unique edge. And this very much has that, so uh, yeah. So I recount my previous statement. I have finally found someone that accepts card. Have a little Pantam. We're in this nice little cafe, which funnily enough is not far from where we're staying. I think we're actually staying above this place, right above it. So uh, yeah. 
we got ourselves two tees for three euros as you can see here and we were able to pay by card now obviously bear in mind that there's 10 places before we found somewhere where we could pay by card but you can pay by card in the right places so I will put the name of this place down below uh, if you want to find a cup of tea and you don't want to get cash out um, in fact I might be able to find it here there we go it's called Red Cafe just there if you can make it out there you go so give it a go you get extra tea footy on there what more can we want so we're going to wait now for our apartment to become available and have a little look around and we'll give our final thoughts so let's do it all right we're in the apartment and uh what a view let's give you a look at this look look at that not too shabby let me zoom in for you there you go look at that that's our view for the day or for the week or the weekend because we're not staying in Montenegro we've got other places that we're going to be visiting but we're not staying in Podgorica and we're going to be going around Montenegro and perhaps even to a different country look at that he's even left his slippers Peter you're a good man respect but there's more so I'll give you a quick tour if you're interested so I can't give you a tour of the bathroom because Tammy's using it and I don't go in there <laughs> we've got a nice little kitchen here nice little seating area where well, you've seen the view which is pretty darn impressive nice bedroom but then the PS to the resistance the, the, the reason why we got this place was for this look at this look quite the view So, here we go, Montenegro, Podgorica, incredible. Look at that, mountains off into the distance. You don't get that everywhere, do you people? Very, very nice. Now, I'm not about to spend this entire video being completely positive about Montenegro. There are issues, and I think it's worth covering them as well, to be fair, and try and give you a, a rounded view of, of the city itself so you have a better perception so first and foremost for me i think there is clearly a need for the infrastructure to improve i don't know if you agree with that mm -hmm. love like oh, yeah. it's like transportation is pretty much minimal like you've got to get taxis everywhere like there is a train station near the airport but it's pretty irregular um it's cheap we're going to try and use that so do keep your eyes peeled for that one um but it's incredibly irregular um card isn't very widely accepted we did find a place that did do card in the end thankfully but i mean as i say it was 10 places then finally that one that did card so uh there is that um the language is mixed so if you're not confident speaking montenegrin or you know a serbo-yugoslavian language then uh it's probably worth keeping that in mind because not everyone speaks English perfectly. So my uh, my knowledge of Montenegrin or whatever language has been useful in this scenario, to be honest, because there has been quite a few people that can't speak it. Equally, the people that can speak it can speak it almost flawlessly, which is very impressive. Oh, yeah, we bumped into a local, didn't we? Yeah, we bumped uh, into yeah. a local, yeah. And um, his English was just impeccable. Anyway, I was like, wow. Oh, yeah, yeah. That was the guy in the cafe, wasn't it? He was, yeah, very, very good English. So um, it's, you know, it depends. Like, for me, I don't like to rely on everyone speaking English, and that's why I learn a snippet of the language when I go to a new place. But uh, if you're not, you know, inclined to do that, then do be prepared to get out your Google Translate and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Um, but, yeah, I would say infrastructure some of the uh, areas can be a little bit run down um tripped over a few pavement slabs a couple mm -hmm. of times um lots of lots <laughs> lots of stray animals and stuff um but the people are very friendly as well so mm. everywhere has its good and bad i'm not going to sit here and completely compliment it it'd be unfair there are some negatives and i'd say the infrastructure the lack of 
card machines mm-hmm. available and, uh, and that's probably more of an us problem by the, by the, by the sounds of it and uh, probably the transportation within the city or well, the transport links aren't very good um, but that's what it is but anyway we hope you've enjoyed this video uh, we're going to go out and explore Podgoditz uh, further um, not far from where we're staying is the Millennium Bridge I believe it's called which is one of the uh, the, the sites of Podgoditsa. we're going to go back to the mosque and uh, have a little look at that there's also a a grand church as well that we're going to go and have a look at um so if you're interested in seeing a bit more of podgoritza and um, you know hopefully making your mind up as to whether or not you want to visit please do join us in that video we hope you've enjoyed this one hope it's been informative and we look forward to seeing you very very soon take care people see you later